thank you all for being here. Like we've been on the island with Max for a while now. We drove 20 hours just with Max from the Netherlands over here to show it to you all. So really happy to be here to actually present it. So yeah, this is Max. We've been talking about it all morning actually. And yeah, it's a dedicated bird radar. And yeah, for the past days actually, we've been together with Mirna also looking into bats. Like a radar is really onto birds, but it's difficult to actually separate the objects. So we were actually thinking, would we be able to track the bats and Mirna yeah, she can confirm it. She's been for the past 20 years every night catching all the bats, so it was uh, really nice to be part of that research the past few days. Max is, as I said, a dedicated bird radar. It's a FMCW radar. And we're able to detect like really large birds, small birds, medium birds at pretty large distances. So Max works a bit like the eye. Whatever we can see, Max can see. However, Max can look much, much further and through every, like all the weather conditions. So that's of course the perk of having Max. And we don't see anything behind the trees. Max cannot look through the trees. If you want to solve these kind of issues, we put Max mostly just on a pole. It can then overlook the whole surrounding. So, so what we actually use, we use radio frequency. So Max sends out a constant radio signal out. And when it bounces off an object, uh, we'll measure the size of the object. So we get a certain reflection size. We call this radar cross section. And this is a really small number. And based on the radar cross section, we're able to categorize birds in sizes. So we cannot categorize species. We might be able to, if we gather enough data together with the observers and then the, the line of the tracks, you can actually say something about the species. Three categories we divided in. This is a large bird, medium bird, and small bird. And large bird, you have to think about like a, a big goose. A small bird, like the bats, for example, they're like really, really tiny. And these are actually all the, the, the yellow tracks that you've been seeing on the screen. These are really, really small birds. So we were also pretty impressed. There's so many tracks. So we were actually thinking of maybe having a bit less tracks because it's difficult to see in the air. But I think this shows actually the purpose of the radar, why you want to have a radar actually. So Max is rotating pretty fast, as you can see. So we do 60 RPM. Every second we get a new update of the tracks. We have an opening angle of 60 degrees, so we do the horizontal up to 60, which means that we have a really small cone of silence. Like a cone of silence means that above we're not sending anything. So if a bird flies straight over the radar, we're not able to see, but this is only 30 degrees. So we have a really nice big coverage, I would say. Yeah, what is something that I always tend to say now, I'm working for nine months now with Robin. I just started out of university and I'm able to control the radar, put it here, set it up. Same with Iris, the drone radar. It says something, I think, about the ease of use of our systems. Like anyone can pretty much use this with a bit of training, I would say. Max has three panels, as you can see. So this is the front. The bottom panel is the transmitter. It transmits just RF through the whole area. Then we have 18 receiving beams, of which 14 of the beams are in the middle panel and four in the top panel. And we use the phased array technique. So the RF signal, it's, it's a waveform. And if you overlap the waveforms, the amplitude increases. So the power of the RF signal increases. So if we put 14 beams together, we have a really like long horizontal coverage. So we can yeah, go to up to 15 kilometers. This is the processed or the instrumented range. But most often we say, okay, the large bird, the big goose, up to eight kilometers is what we specify. But in the horizontal, we have a really, really long range. Then in the blind spot, that's the top 30 to 60 degrees. This is only four beams. We look a little less far, but still we look up to 1,000 meters in the air. So that is a lot. So both the uh, transmitter and the receiver, they're in that radar. So what you can actually see, there's a fiberglass cable going to the server. The server is the small box that's standing there with the screen coming out. So this is a power over ethernet cable. We power the radar over there and the data gets transmitted to the server. And the server does the, the post-processing. We already pre-process some data within Max, but all the data in the end will be processed by the server. And all the tracks that we actually gather, they go into a database. So yeah, for the past few nights, we gathered to think about 50,000 tracks a night, so that is really, really a lot, I would say. And that database, you can 
use for yourself with SQL. You can do your QGIS, for example, you can visualize all the tracks. And what we also do, this is the, the report viewer that Sibyl already mentioned during the presentation. The report viewer also has visualization of, we can just crunch all the data into nice visualizations for the end user. And I think this is what you kind of need to be able to build a wind park, for example. So in the tent, there's a screen, so really feel free to look at it. Um, the tracks, they have two numbers. The larger number is the, the altitude of the track. The smaller number is the RCS size. So it's a really, really small number. It's like the rate of cross section of a small bird is in between minus 30 to minus 45. It's difficult to explain yeah, the, the size of the reflection in radar terms in, in the real size of the object. So radar cross section depends on the movement of the bird. So what we do, we average it out. We have really long tracks, so we have a, an RCS that's pretty much yeah, an average at a certain point, which uh, we do a, a classification, we categorize in the RCS size on medium, small, large bird. So what this is, this is a general interface, this is okay. called developer view, so this okay. allows me to show pretty much everything. Okay. So what you can see also on the tablets, you can just set the heights and see the tracks for that specific height. Yeah. And also in the database, you can just set it to record only the tracks that you want to see, okay. indeed in the height of the, the bottom of the road or to the top. And what we're now doing for, for the past five days, we've been just gathering data here. And what we can do, we have the database of Max, we have the database of the bed sensor, and we can just see all the timestamps that overlap we keep, the rest we throw away. And what we can then do, and that is I think really interesting, look into the track of the bed. So all the data that goes in the database, you can get visualized in a really easy manner. So here you see a risk line. So this is arbitrary, you can, you can choose this for yourself. You know, we do not choose this risk, it's just based on the different countries. And yeah. So also, if you talk about countries, the radar that I have here, it's uh, X-Band radar. So it's a uh, 9 to 50 megahertz. And we also provide different frequencies based on the, the different country like requirements for radar. Yeah, the 3D, if you want to do this, then you go into the database, select the tracks that you want to actually see in 3D. And then you have to visualize them in, in QGIS. You can actually export them as well. Look at the tracks in, in Google Earth, for example, just a free tool. It's, uh, Okay, so what you can actually see here, this is the, the raw radar image. So this is all the reflections that the radar is receiving. And we're really looking for the moving object. So we have a ground clutter sensitivity. So this is yeah, the ground, the, the static filter actually. So everything that's static, we filter out. But this is the, the image of the, the 0 to 30 degrees. So we can really look far because we have 14 beams over here. But then going into the blind spot, so this is the last four beams, it's much smaller, you know, these go up, yeah. The bird tracks are just really straight. And what you can see about the, the sea clutter tracks, they're like... So these one you can just filter out that manner. What you can also see is that these like sea clutter tracks, they're just really low. You can draw polygons in the interface uh, with certain heights. So example, uh, the tracks from the sea, they can be like in a minus in height because they come from down the radar, you know, so it measures in minus. Objects that we see, like we measured the bed size, we could see the RCS size, really small in between like the minus 35 to minus 40 in RCS range. And if you look now in, in the sky, you're not going to see it, but it's like fire crest, I think it was, that they were telling about. That migration is probably now happening. And it's really interesting. And throughout the night, you can really see even more tracks. And we've seen examples of just the whole screen being full with tracks. Like we can track like really, really a lot of objects at the same time. So the tablets that we have, this is a web-based interface. You can also on your phone just look at the radar from like a long distance. Like I have a small router over here yesterday night. I was just checking the radar. I kind of like the radar. 